Hello, and welcome to the session on best practices for memory sofa Redis. My name is Gopal Ashok, product manager for Cloud Memory Store. In today's session, we will go over what's new with Cloud Memory Store, talk about various deployment options and considerations, and discuss some of the best practices that will help you run Memory Store optimally for your latency-sensitive applications. For those of you who are not familiar with the service, Memory Store for Redis provides a fully managed Redis service that is highly available, scalable, and secure, and is compatible with open source Redis. This makes it super easy to migrate applications using Redis to GCP and get the value of a fully managed Redis service. The speed, versatility, scalability, and high availability of Redis makes it a key service for building internet scale applications. And memory store is used by 90% of the top 100 Google Cloud customers. Our customers use the service for a wide range of use cases from simple caching to real-time analytics. Before we get into the best practices, I wanted to share some of the exciting new feature releases we have done over the last few months around scalability and availability and enterprise readiness. Let's start with Redis 6 with support for IO multi-threading. With multi-threaded I.O. in Redis 6, we are able to deliver 2x or more throughput uh, improvements compared to lower versions. So if you are limited by throughput, we highly recommend that you consider moving to Redis 6, and we'll talk more about this in the latest slides. The other key launch we did recently that was super exciting was adding support for reader replicas. This feature will allow you to have up to five replicas on a standard tier instance that can be used for scaling reads. This gives you a 6x increase in read throughput. And if you combine this with Redis 6 improvements that we talked about, you can get more than 10x improvements in read throughput compared to lower versions. And that is, again, very, very exciting. RDV snapshots is another key feature that we launched to preview. With this feature, you can enable automated backup and recovery using RDV snapshots, uh, which gives you added protection against uh, complete loss of keys in an instance during catastrophic failure. We have also made improvements to the availability of basic tier instances by enabling flushless updates, specifically during maintenance and instance scaling. With this improvement, basic tier will not experience a full cache flush and will see reduced unavailability of the instance during these specific operations. Again, a big improvement if you're using a basic tier instance. A couple of other improvements I want to call out include support for cross-region access, which enables accessing memory store instances in different regions, and support for non-RFC 1918 IP addresses when creating and accessing a memory store instance. Lastly, we have also launched maintenance windows for Redis. This now allows you to control the time when a planned maintenance can happen in your instance. This has been a long NAS feature, and we are super excited to deliver that to you. Now that you know some of the key capabilities, let's look at how to optimally run Memory Store for Redis for your most critical applications. Let's start with deployment options. As you build applications on Memory Store for Redis, it is important to understand the various deployment options the service provides so that you can make the right choice. So depending on the scale, availability, and cost requirements of your application, you can choose from three different deployment options. For use cases like simple caching, where loss of cache can be tolerated, the basic tier provides a very cost-effective solution. So with basic tier, as you know, you get a single node Redis instance. Uh, the key thing to understand here is that basic instances do not have an available DSLA and can experience, min experience minutes of downtime and complete loss of keys in case of failures. So your application must be able to tolerate um, the cache being unavailable for a long period of time if you are using basic tier instances. But we know um, that you know, flushless updates improve the availability in some cases, but if your application requires a highly available Redis instance, we highly recommend that you use standard tier instances. So standard tier instances come with 99.9% .9 availability SLA and can be deployed in two configurations. You know, in the HA configuration, which is the original standard tier instance configuration, instances come with a primary and a single replica deployed across zones, which gives you a redundancy from zone failures. Data is asynchronously replicated to the replicas, and instances are automatically fade lower to the replica within a few seconds, providing applications very minimal downtime. 
A key thing to note here, though, is that since replication is asynchronous and the replication lag can be a few seconds, um, you can experience some staleness of data after a failover, and the application must be tolerant of that. So this is something that you know you should keep in mind and be aware of when you're using memory store for Redis. In scenarios where you want applications to utilize replicas, you can configure a standard tier instance with read replicas. Uh, you can have up to five read replicas in an instance, and applications can connect to the read endpoint to scale the read queries. So if your application is experiencing scaling limits today on a standard tier instance, you can simply enable read replicas on the instance and utilize a replica to fan out reads. What you can also do is you can also seamlessly add additional replicas, which will allow you to scale the leads, reads linearly. So to get optimal redundancy, one of the things that we recommend is that you should have at least two read replicas for the instance, so that in case one, one of the replicas go down, the read endpoint will continue to um, go, um, query against the second replica, and you'll continue to have maintain availability for your read queries for your application. So the obvious next question is, how do you determine the right capacity for the instance um, to achieve the throughput the application needs? So memory store for Redis basic and standard tier comes in five different capacity tiers. And uh, as noted there from M1 to M5 with different memory capacities. Starting with Redis 6, each capacity tier comes with a fixed number of IO threads and vCPUs. As you increase the capacity to higher tiers, you get a corresponding increase in IO threads and underlying vCPUs, as you can see in the table. And what you will see is an increased throughput as you go up the capacity tiers. For example, for a simple get set workload, you can see more than a 2x improvement in throughput going from an M1 tier, let's say a 5 gigabyte, to, or a 4 gigabyte to an M5 tier, which is a 110 gigabyte. But depending on the Redis commands uh, used by the application, we know the actual throughput can vary. So it is important to run a benchmark to determine the optimal capacity tier for your application. So if you're currently running on lower versions of Redis and hitting the limits, uh, we recommend that you upgrade your version to Redis 6 and consider scaling your capacity to meet the throughput needs of your application. The good news is you can upgrade from any version of Redis, including Redis 3 to Redis 6 with very minimal downtime using the version upgrade feature. So we make it very simple for you to get to Redis 6. Now that you know how to optimally configure a memory store for Redis instance for your application, let's take a look at some of the issues you may encounter and the best practices to mitigate those issues. A common problem that you encounter when running memory store for Redis is high CPU utilization. With very high CPU utilization, your queries can experience higher latency and correspondingly reduce throughput, which can severely impact you know, your application performance. So why does this happen? There are different reasons why you will see high CPU utilization. There are two main reasons when this happens. One is you're really pushing the limits of an instance. That means your application's throughput is uh, extremely high and it's hitting the limits of whatever instance capacity that you've provisioned. And secondly, the commands that you're using have higher algorithmic complexity. So even if it is not a high throughput, high QPS, the complexity of the commands and the number of keys that the commands are processing is causing high CPU saturations. So there could be other reasons too, but just I'm calling out a couple of the main ones. In both these cases, the first step is to monitor the CPU utilization and understand the root cause. The key metrics to monitor are CPU utilization and calls, which gives you a breakdown of the commands and the throughput, which gives you a sense of the workload pattern, what kind of commands are being run at the time of high CPU utilization, and then you can determine whether it's a you know, high algorithmic complexity command that is causing the problem, et cetera. And you can use cloud monitoring or uh, cloud console um, uh, where we expose uh, all, the, all the metrics for you to monitor. Depending on the root cause, you can take different mitigation steps. You can either scale up and op optimize application code or scale out. If an application is hitting the throughput limits of an instance like we discussed, uh, upgrading to Redis 6 can help if you're on a lower version uh, so that you can take advantage of IO threading. But if you're already on Redis 6, uh, one of the things you can consider is um, increasing the capacity tier to get additional throughput. But again, it all depends on the type of commands that you're running. So if it is uh, if it is read commands that you're running, one additional thing that you can do here is to uh, leverage read replicas and offload the read queries to the replicas. Uh, that way you can get additional throughput from 
the replica nodes and reduce the CPU utilization on the primary. In cases where CPU saturation is due to slow or batch commands, con consider optimizing the application code. And we see the scenarios quite a bit. And I'm just giving you one example here. A scenario where you see high CPU utilization is cache reloading, where the cache is flushed using flush DB, for example, which is a very expensive command, and reloaded. And especially when flush DB is called against a you know, Redis instance with a large number of keys, it can cause very high CPU utilization. So in the cases like this, um, consider using TTL to expire keys over time or do batch delete of keys. On the other hand, if the CPU saturation is due to a high number of write commands and you're hitting the limits of a single instance, you may be required to scale out the queries by sharding the keys across multiple memory store instances. There are two ways you can do this. Either use a proxy-based sharding solution using Envoy Proxy or use client-side sharding by segmenting the keys across multiple instances from the application itself. I'm not going to go in, in depth in term, uh, about the, um, the ways you can scale up, but uh, we have a session called Deploying Cloud Memory Store for Redis for Any Scale, which goes into the details of how to deploy an Envoy proxy to scale memory store. So I highly recommend that you watch that session. Memory management is critical to running a Redis instance optimally. So let's take a look at the issues, concepts, and best practices here. Out of memory condition is a common occurrence and can manifest in different ways. When the instance is under memory pressure, writes can fail with out of memory errors. There's a common error that customers see, or operations involving snapshots like upgrade or scaling can also fail. So it's very important to understand how to manage memory optimally for your instance. There are three main concepts related to memory management that you should understand. The capacity of provision when you create the instance, the max memory configuration, which determines the memory used to store keys and the system overhead. By default, when you provision an instance, the max memory is the same as the capacity. That means you have the same capacity available to store keys. And, it, and every instance also comes with a small amount of system memory overhead uh, to account for memory fragmentation. But the challenge is, depending on the workload and operations on the instance, you may require more overhead to deal with fragmentation. And if you don't, the instance can uh, run into out of memory conditions. So how do you give an instance more overhead? So you can give an instance more memory overhead by lowering the max memory. So in the diagram, uh, you can see that by lowering max memory, you are adding the additional 2 GB of uh, uh, system overhead or memory for for use uh, for system overhead. This is a configuration you can set for the instance using UI or API. So what are some of the best practices you should follow to manage your memory? Uh, you should monitor and alert on the system memory usage ratio metric, which shows the amount of system overhead the instance has. This is a super critical metric that you should be monitoring. The recommendation is that it should be closer to um, 80%. The closer it gets to 100%, your instance has a higher likelihood of failing due to out-of-memory conditions. So as we discussed, to increase the overhead, you can lower max memory. But one thing to note here is that lowering max memory reduces the capacity available for keys and can result in eviction and in turn can lower cache ratio. So in scenarios like that, it is important to monitor the metrics uh, outlined on the right side, including cache ratio, and consider scaling up the instance uh, and adjusting max memory at the same time to ensure that there is enough capacity for keys and also there is optimal memory overhead. You should also ensure the right eviction policy is set for to ensure eviction of keys, which also helps with memory management. The default eviction policy is volatile LRU, and keys are expired based on the TTL set for the keys. If you're not setting TTL, which we highly recommend uh, on keys, you should consider using expiration policies like all keys allow you, which have X keys when usage hits max memory limit. The next area to watch out for is connection management. There are a few best practices you should follow around connection management. Memory Sofa Redis standard tier instances always comes with a primary endpoint, which direct traffic to the primary instance. And if read replica is enabled, comes with a read endpoint that balances read traffic across the available read replicas. The default connection limit for a primary endpoint is 65,000 connections, and for a read endpoint, it is 65,000 times the number of read replicas. One thing to note here is that if TLS is enabled, then the limit is actually much lower, and you can refer to the documentation to understand the limits, but that's something to keep in mind. 
So as a best practice, even though the connect, the connection limit seems very high, you should always monitor the connection count to ensure you're not hitting the limits due to bad client uh, behavior. Uh, and you can use the connected client metric to do that. When there is a failure of the primary node, um, something to note is that the instance will fail over to the replica and the failover can take 20 to 30 seconds. So depending on the application requirement, you should implement a connection retry logic using fixed time or exponential backoff, whichever works for the application to ensure you're not overloading the server with too many connection attempts. This is a common problem that we see uh, with customers. So one of the things um, to note is that depending on the, the Redis client that you're using, it may or may not uh, support retry logic. For example, Redis and Redis does, Jetis do not. So it's uh, important to look into your client uh, and understand how to implement the retry logic. Other best practices that you should follow is to implement connection pooling to manage and use connections. And also, you can also use the Redis idle connection timeout configuration on the server side to clean up uh, and use connections also. And lastly, when using read endpoint, you can run into a scenario where connections are unbalanced to a specific replica due to failure of some other replicas. Again, you can monitor this by looking at the connection uh, metric or the connection um, count metric uh, at the node level, which you can see in the uh, cloud monitoring and also cloud console. If that happens, um, consider reestablishing long-lived uh, read endpoint connections periodically so that you can rebalance connections across all the replicas. And finally, let's look at some general best practices. If your application is sensitive to the complete loss of cache data, considering, consider enabling RDB snapshots for the instance. But one thing to note here is that RDB snapshot can increase memory usage depending on the right load on the instance uh, when the RDB uh, snapshots are being taken. So it's very important to make sure you follow the memory management best practices to prevent out of memory conditions. For instances that are sensitive to downtime, we highly recommend that you enable maintenance windows. This will allow you to control the time when plan maintenance happens on the instance. When enabling maintenance, you should also ensure that you are subscribed to the maintenance notification, which will give you advance notice about upcoming maintenance. And this has to be enabled manually, so make sure that you do that. Maintenance involves upgrading the instance, so it's important to ensure that instance has sufficient memory overhead when the maintenance happens. So as you can see, following memory management best practices is critical for many scenarios. So please make sure that you review the documentation and implement those best practices, some of which we talked about over here. In summary, to run memory store for Redis reliably, um, select the appropriate tier based on the application's availability needs. Run benchmarks to understand you know, the throughput uh, requirements and also the limits of the various capacity tiers. Choose the right capacity tier based on the throughput needs. And finally, implement uh, some of the best practices that we talked about here. At the bottom, you can find uh, useful links for some of the topics that we talked about. Hopefully, um, this session gave you some insight on useful tips in terms of how to run your memory store for Redis instance reliably, and hope you found that useful. Thank you.